everyone, it's Lucy and today you're going to be getting my first impressions on some best-selling Korean skincare products. Now if you've been uh, hanging around with me for a little while, you'll know that I've been really trying to diligently use up some of my skincare and makeup products that I already had because I already had them. <laughs> I didn't need any more. I kind of had a little bit of everything in every category. I had a vitamin C serum, you know, I had some sunscreen, I had different moisturizers that I was interested in using. Um, but we're kind of getting to, I, I wouldn't say the tail end, I think I still have more skincare than the average person. But for someone whose skincare is, you know, a hobby and kind of like their side job, it's, it's now getting to an appropriate time for me to try some new things. And I realized that I was kind of falling out of the zeitgeist, I guess, of the skincare community. Especially when I was working in skincare, I was like obsessed. I was constantly reading like Reddit posts and forums and like scouring the internet to like see what the hot new ingredients were and like looking at the science and everything like that. So forgive me if my brain is a little bit rusty, but I've noticed so many great new amazing Korean skincare products that have come out on the market that have become really popular within the last like one to two years. And the last time that I bought a lot of Korean skincare was when I was actually in Korea. That was at the end of 2018, which I was like, oh, I only went to Korea like last year. And it's like, no, <laughs> it's been almost two years. Actually, I think it's been two years now. I think this time last year I was in Korea and Japan. No, two years ago. God damn it. So all the items in this video have been kindly gifted by Stylevana, but this is not a video that I'm being paid to make and they don't have any approvals on my content. However, in saying that, I do actually have an affiliate code with them. So you can use the code INF10LL to get 10 to 15% off your order, depending on the brand. And I actually was already aware of Starfana before they contacted me. Um, they have genuinely great discounts on a lot of their range, like constantly, <laughs> consistently really, really good deals. And I also think their range is really good. A lot of online K-beauty stores tend to have a lot of the brands, but not necessarily always what's, you know, just recently come out in Korea. So, you know, if you follow the brands on Instagram and you're like, oh, that new serum's been released, I'm gonna go online and then it's like not there for months. But Starfinder had some stuff that was super recently released, so I was really impressed by that. Alrighty, let's jump into it with the first item, which is surprisingly controversial. <laughs> and I bet some of you in the skincare community can guess the product I'm talking about. And it is this guy here. This is the Purito Centella Green Level Unscented Sun. Now, mm, woo, woo. at the time of filming this, this whole like situation is still a little bit up in the air. I'm going to tell you the simple version of the situation because I'm by no means a cosmetic chemist. I'm just an interested skincare party. <laughs> On Instagram, this account came out that they had done some independent tests at a couple of labs to test the SPF levels of the sunscreen. And, you know, it claims to be an SPF 50 and the test came back and I believe it was um, marked as an SPF 18 or 19. Now, that <laughs> is a problem. Purito came out with a statement really promptly, which I appreciate <laughs> as a consumer. And they said that they will be conducting their own independent tests because um, while this is Purio's product, like many skincare products and many beauty products in the industry, they purchased this off a formulator or a manufacturer um, who make this sunscreen for them, if that makes sense. They were saying that um, they are looking into the details from the lab who makes their stuff. They're still taking responsibility for it, um, but essentially they're like, well, they told us it was SPF 50 and standard practice is if the manufacturer is like, yep, yeah, that's SPF 50. You're like, yeah, sure, that's what you said because you are a scientific lab. So that is in progress at the moment. There haven't been any results. If there are, I'll insert them here, but if not, then <laughs> you'll just see my face being like, what's happening? But then there were also some people questioning the original call out post or the original test because that party may have a vested interest in saying this sunscreen isn't good because at the moment this is the top selling or one of the best selling um, KBD sunscreens and that party to my understanding is going to release a sunscreen so it's all a bit like I don't really have like a, a finalized opinion on that so I can't at the moment recommend this to you as an SPF 50 um, with my whole heart because it could very well not be an SPF 50 and be more like an SPF 20. Which actually, if you live somewhere where you don't have super high UV index um, and it's, you know, there's not a lot of sun <laughs> where you are or, you know, you just want something to pop on while you're inside during winter, this actually could 
still be okay for you. But for someone like me who lives in a country where the UV index isn't really <laughs> something to mess with, um, I have suspended my use of this during the day or as my sole sun protection for the moment. And I'm gonna go back to using my SPF 50. So I was actually testing this out the last week. I didn't have any problems with it. I didn't experience any sunburn or anything like that, but it, it you know, Sun protection isn't just sunburn, it's also long-term damage from UV rays. So it is really complicated. I hope that, you know, it, it works out all right, but I, I, I don't know at this point. Because up until literally yesterday, when I heard this news, um, I was going to say this is many favourite sunscreen. The texture is absolutely gorgeous. I understand why it's such a, you know, bestseller. And this, this formula is so, so gorgeous and it just goes on beautifully. It's moisturising, it's not super greasy, it plays well under makeup, it layers nicely with other skincare. In saying that, I don't want to recommend it at this point. Again, I will put a note up if any further information has come out. Um, if things do get cleared up and this sunscreen is all, all good to go, green light, um, I would recommend it, but at the moment, I can't recommend it if you if you actually need dedicated SPF 50. From here, the like skincare drama really like goes down a bit, so we can all relax. But I did need to get that one out of the way because I was like writing notes for this video and I was like, oh my god, no. Next up, I have a couple of products from Ionic, Unique, Ionic, Unique. I think. And the first one we're going to talk about is the Centella Calming Gel Cream. Now this is a really lightweight texture. Um, it's very basic, really light, nice for layering and sinks right into the skin. It's really that kind of like hydrating, cooling gel texture. I wouldn't say it's like silicone-y. It's almost like an aloe vera gel, so it has that really cooling effect where it just sinks right in, but it also doesn't have a lot of substance to it, which is fine. It, it, it's just very light. I personally have skin that's quite prone to dehydration, so it's quite nice to me as a layer, but on its own, it isn't really enough. But in the summer when I'm using lots of different hydrating layers, so hyaluronic acid serums and things like that, this works as a nice layer in between those and the sunscreen because I don't necessarily need a really thick occlusion and creamy moisturizer because the sunscreen is usually somewhat thick and occlusive anyway but I just need a little something extra I can't just use you know lightweight watery serums this is probably something that I wouldn't have purchased of my own volition um, but in trying it I do think it is a really lovely quite basic product I can definitely see myself popping this on when I have lazy days like today actually that are <laughs> really hot except I put makeup on to film but I you know if I was just Kind of hanging out at home in the aircon and just wanted to put a little bit of something on my face this would be a really really great product for that i believe i've used this analogy before to explain skincare but think about a movie right like a blockbuster movie and in those blockbuster movies you often have your celebrities the stars and you're like oh my god zendaya <laughs> or whoever else you you know Tim timothy timothy so you have your like timothy and Zendaya skincare products, I'm thinking of June, in case you didn't realize. But you have these like stunning products and they're just really exciting and they have things that are so special about them. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's gonna like blow my mind. And oh my God, their outfits. And oh my God, like what are they gonna do in the movie? And they just, you know, you're starstruck by them. But you have to also realize that there's, you know, like the props department and the director and the writer, and they're all really special too. And they are what make the movie the movie they're what keep the film schedule running they're what make sure that the movie comes out in cinemas or not in cinemas if it's 2020 you know what i mean they're a really important part of the puzzle too um so i guess what i'm going to say is i often am really interested and i'm sure many of you are too in the like movie star skincare products you know your tatcha dewy skin creams or your summer friday cc serum which they're also really good products that's not taking away anything from them but it's just important to think about the you know Centella gel cream. <laughs> they're not as exciting, but they're still really important and they're really good and they're definitely worth your time and they're worth looking at and they're worth respecting. That was a really bizarre analogy, but I think you get my drift. So after that bizarre analogy, let's move on to the second Ionique skincare product, which is their Centella Bubble Cleansing Foam. So this one has 69% Centella Asiatica leaf water. Um, Centella is also the same as Sika or Tiger Grass. And it's actually in quite a few of the products that I'm trying today because it is just an ingredient that's very much in vogue in Korean skincare and has been for the last, like, I want to say two to three years. So this guy has been taking up residence in my bathroom and I've been alternating using it as a second cleanser in the evenings or my morning cleanser. 
and you know what I think I think it's quite nice I think it's really great ironing products are at a great price point they're often under $15 cleansers I find you don't necessarily need to spend the big bucks on them I definitely have some cleansers that are in the higher price point that I really really enjoy but I have a lot of cleansers in the like 10 to $15 range that I would also really recommend and I think this is uh, joining the ranks it has this kind of like light herbal scent which is a little bit different to what I'm used to but I, I quite enjoy it but it's a little funky but I kind of like it. I don't know, I'm like a kombucha kind of gal, so I'm like, ooh, <laughs> what's this smell? But that's just a heads up, but obviously it's a cleanser, so it's only really gonna be on your skin for like less than a minute anyway. And in general, in terms of cleansers, I do quite enjoy these like foam formulas that, um, you know, they're a liquid in the bottle, but as you push them through the pump, it comes out as really nice light whipped foam. I think it's really gentle, um, cause you're not like lathering it on your skin. It comes kind of like pre-lathered. The go-to skincare one, which is an Australian brand, has the same um, pump and I really, really like that one. I really enjoyed that cleanse in the past and emptied it and it's been amazing. So it's nice to have another one like that in my skincare routine. Like it does remind me, I'm like, oh yeah, I do really like, <laughs> I really like that type of feel. It feels quite luxurious um, and you know, having it at this price point is really, really nice. If you have dry skin or if you're in winter and just need something that is a little creamier, has a little bit more slip to it, um, I probably wouldn't recommend this necessarily, but if you have oily skin or if you're living somewhere that's hot or even just if you have, you know, balanced to dry skin and it's summertime, like me, um, this will work a treat. I think it's really lovely. Um, I would definitely recommend this. And I feel like I can give my like impressions on cleansers pretty quickly because they're not leave-on products that are meant to have like lasting effects on the skin. They're just, you know, cleansers. Do they clean? Yes or no? <laughs> Do they clean? Yes or no? Do they irritate the skin? Yes or no? Okay, this next one I'm really excited to talk about because it reminds me of an iconic Korean skincare product, but that one's over $200 and this one is under 20. And it's the Isentree Green Tea Fresh Toner. So this is my first time trying Isentree as a brand. I haven't really heard a lot about them before. I've started seeing them popping up here and there. Like I feel like their, their skincare stardom is on the rise. So in terms of a first product for me to try, I'm seriously impressed. Immediately when I pop this on my hand, it reminds me in color and texture and feel um, and just initial experience of the Amore Pacific green tea essence. Um, I don't, is that the actual name? It's something. It does have that really similar scent and texture, which makes sense because the primary ingredient in both of them is fermented green tea. Whereas the Amore Pacific one is 100% of their fermented green tea blend and that formula or that blend of green tea is done over uh, like 150 days and it's this very special extraction and fermentation process with a very special type of green tea leaf that's specifically um, engineered, <laughs> bioengineered to make that product. Uh, this one is a combination of green tea as well as ginkgo leaf, centella, willow bark and a few other nice little extracts, even some hyaluronic acid as well. Until now, I had never really tried a product where I immediately like put it on, felt it, smelt it, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like the more Pacific Essence. I, I haven't found anything like that before. So that's why I'm making all these comparisons because I'm kind of like internally freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, do I have my inexpensive alternative? I think I do. I've been really enjoying this as I've been testing this out because I have skin that's quite prone to uh, getting flushed and red. It's not necessarily sensitivity, it's just a lack of pigment in the skin. So any redness, you just see it. And I really enjoyed using this at the nighttime just to prep my skin before I put on my other layers on. Mwah. Gorgeous. So yeah, I've been super duper impressed by this and I'm so excited to keep using it and I'm actually really keen to check out some other stuff from the Isn Tree range. So if you guys have any suggestions, if you've tried Isn Tree, um, please let me know because this like, this is a, you know, little surprise fave of the haul so far. I'm really, really loving this. First impressions are very, very good for me. Now this one here is from the brand Some By Me and I've definitely seen Some By Me around, but I, eh, like, ugh, I, like I've seen it, but I just kind of was like, oh, that's like not for me. It's a brand that's for someone, but it's not me. And that's mainly because they have their like AHA, BHA, PHA miracle line, which I actually have a product from it that I'll show you in a moment. But I don't know, I, Lucy live and drinking game, take a shot, I work in marketing. Um, but sometimes certain marketing campaigns or the way that a brand brands themselves can be quite like off-putting to me. Like if they kind of like do this whole like 30 days, like you want it back, like we're gonna change your life. I'm like, chill out, dude. Like what in the QVC is this? <laughs> 
what in the home shopping network is this calm down so i feel bad because i know like people have said it's good but i don't know it just there are a couple of like korean skincare brands that do that kind of like viral marketing and i'm kind of like oh, oh it's just a bit aggressive i'm like a soft delicate creature i need to be nurtured towards a sale so when i received some sun by me products i was like okay finally we can see what all the fuss is about show me what you're made of infomercial kings their brand um kind of core demographic that they were targeting seemed to be those who were um acne prone which isn't really my primary skin concern so i was kind of like okay then it's not the brand for me this however why did you guys not tell me about it have any of you guys tried this it's lovely, it's delightful. This is the Galactomyces Pure Vitamin C Glow Serum. Now, I had to check the ingredients because I was like, mm, how much vitamin C? Um, quite a bit. <laughs> it's really hard to quantify things without like percentages and full formula breakdowns, but we don't really need to do that necessarily to get an idea of the product. But this has Galactomyces and vitamin C. You guys all know about vitamin C, it brightens and plumps up your skin and Galactomyces is really good for kind of like regulating tone um, in terms of calming the skin and balancing redness, or at least it has been for me. And I've spoken before about how much I love uh, Galactomyces or firm infiltrates in general because they really work with my skin. My skin is like, give me that skin kombucha ASAP. So I, I don't know, I hadn't really heard of many products having a combination of the two like i don't know normally they're like vitamin c or they're like glycomyces but combined together i was like what a team up what an iconic duo will it work and while i can't comment too much on the long-term efficacy i do need to use it for a little bit longer to make sure that the you know effects that i'm seeing are long-term and not just a fluke or something else in my routine it's cosmetically elegant, it's beautiful and easy to apply, it's not sticky, it layers nicely with sunscreen and other products. I've had no peeling with this. And with vitamin C, I've had that issue with so many products where it peels. I don't know exactly the percentage of vitamin C, so probably, and from, from me using it, I don't feel like it's as high as a dedicated vitamin C product. Again, I, I don't wanna make any like early promises or claims, but from like the week and a bit that I've been using it, I have seen something happen something <laughs> I've been loving using this in the morning to just help plump up my skin and even that I mean effect it really feels hydrated and plumped my skin which I really enjoy so if the long-term vitamin C brightening effect as well as the um, tone evening or redness reducing galactomyces also does a job this could be like a winning serum it's amazing the other thing I will say and I'll touch on this with the next product too is that the uh, the ingredient list is really extensive um, and I don't quite know to what end that all plays into the formula. Um, it's got a lot in it. I'll like put it up here. Um, it's quite the ingredient list. And I don't think that's a bad thing. By all means, it should be a good thing. Um, but I'm just querying how much all of that helps in the formula. Um, there's just a lot in there. And there's a couple of things there that could be potentially irritating to sensitive skin. I haven't experienced any irritation, albeit I'm not super easily irritated, but it's just something to think about. Um, it, it, I just think it's kind of interesting. But like, by all means, all of the ingredients, and a lot of them, I was like, oh my God, they've, they've got that in there, that's, uh, that's kind of a flex, like that's kind of an added bonus. Um, but I wonder if it's like just a drop with like a tiny little bit of everything in it. But in saying that, even if it's just the vitamin C and galactomyces, I'm happy, do you know what I mean? So if those add things in there, uh, at a level that contributes in a good way. I'm not mad about it. And I also don't really care if they're in there and don't really do anything because they're not really causing any harm to me at least. Um, I just think it's interesting. It's interesting formulation. I haven't really seen too many brands do that. Um, it's just kind of random. Anyway, we'll move on to the next Sun By Me product. The Aha Baha Baha Miracle Cream. I'm just kidding. It's the AHA BHA PHA 30 Days Miracle Cream with 70% Centella. Damn, Centella is getting a really great, uh, great promo <laughs> in this video. So again, when I first heard about this product line, this um, AHA, BHA, PHA 30 Days Miracle line, I kind of thought it would be really intense um, with like high levels of these ingredients, but it's, it's actually 70% Centella Asiatica water and it's really chill. <laughs> it's like nowhere near as intense. I thought it was gonna be like 
tingle city, um, like burning my face level craziness, but it, it seems to me to be really chill. But yeah, this has been like a surprisingly soothing and lovely um, cream. I've been using it at the night time, um, just because I didn't necessarily know what percentage or what level of AHA, BHA and PHA was in it. You should always use sunscreen, like no matter what during the day. Um, but I just didn't want to use this during the daytime because sometimes when you have chemical exfoliants in a product and you use them during the daytime under makeup, they kind of like continue working away and can like exfoliate your makeup off. <laughs> I know that sounds really silly, but I've had it happen. So I tend to stick to using these types of products at nighttime. Yeah, it's surprisingly soothing. Um, centella extract is the first ingredient and there's also glycerin, niacinamide and a whole stack of other extracts, much like the serum I just showed you. There's just like all, all of this. And believe me, some of them are really great, but I just don't know if they do a lot of what they do or if they're just kind of there like hanging out. But either way, like, I'm not mad about it. Those are all nice things to have in there. Again, a couple of essential oils or more fragrant um, kind of extracts. So if you are on the sensitive side, just be aware of that. Um, there is kind of this like menthol kind of like tingle to this. It reminds me a lot of the Summer Fridays jet lag mask crossed with the Dr. Dennis Gross exfoliating moisturizer. It's kind of like a combo of those two, but slightly lighter. It's more of a gel cream. I thought it'd be more creamy and more occlusive, but it's not, which is really nice because I can use this um, during summer because that's kind of my current <laughs> beef. It's uh, very hot and I don't want anything too um, oily because it's just so hot. <laughs> so if you hear the fan in the background today, I'm sorry, but I couldn't not. It's so hot. <laughs> it's under $20 and the ingredient list is pretty poppin' and I'm really enjoying using it, so I'm gonna keep using it. I will let you guys know, but yeah, if, if you were thinking about trying it out or if you were looking for a nice gel cream moisturizer that has a little bit of a kick to it, um, I would definitely have a look into this one. It's, it's really, really intriguing to me and I've been really enjoying it so far. Now I'm gonna round up this video with some Korean skincare OGs and I have quite a few products from Laneige, which was one of the first K-beauty brands I started using like years ago. It's iconic and they continue to come out with amazing products and formulas. So let's uh, dive into it, shall we? This is included in my package as a little extra to try, um, but I'm not gonna recommend it because it's essentially a very traditional astringent toner. It's not really my vibe at all. It's quite fragranced and has a very high uh, drying alcohol percentage. By all means, if those types of products are what work for your skin, this is a nice version of one of those. But for the most part, I just think that there are better alternatives to these types of products for refreshing the skin or for using as a toner that don't necessarily have such a large amount of drying alcohols. It's really heavily perfumed um, and it's just a bit old school for my personal taste. So I, I wouldn't recommend this one. Um, I would go for something like the Essentry Green Tea Toner, something like that, which is you know still gonna give you that fresh, uh, cool feeling, but it's not necessarily going to strip your skin of all the goodness. So not recommending that one. But next up we have two of these guys, and these are the Laneige Sleeping Masks. These are iconic, these are some of their best sellers. I think they have, you know, one sold every like 12 seconds or something like that. You know, they're sold a lot. <laughs> they're best sellers and they continue to be iconic Korean skincare products. And for a really good reason, I'm gonna start off with the OG, which is the Laneige Water Sleeping Mask. I believe it used to be called the Water Sleeping Pack. It's gone through a few iterations because it's been around for years at this point. The last time I used it was several years ago and I couldn't really remember how I felt about it. Uh, I wasn't as you know deeply into ingredients at that time, I didn't have as much of an understanding. So I think I just thought it was good, but I kind of like didn't really get it. <laughs> so while I remember it being primarily silicon based, which is what it is, it also actually has some vitamin C and some magnesium and some other really great things in the formula, which I like literally didn't recollect at all. I don't know if it always had it in there or if they've updated to include it, but uh, yeah, there's just definitely some nice little extra things in here. So what I've been using this for is at nighttime, I've been doing my skincare routine. I've been using the Essentry Green Tea Essence, um, some of my hydrating products like the Glorious Bee Plum Plum Hydrating Serum, things like that. Uh, and then I pop this on top in lieu of a moisturizer just because it has been really hot and I don't need something super occlusive or creamy and lay them with oils. I haven't needed that because it has been really hot, but I do need something to just 
seal in those hydrating layers and stop it from all just like escaping overnight. So it locks all that hydration in and then when you wake up the next day, your skin is like plump and dewy and ready to go. So, but this is by all means a really lovely product. I totally get why it's popular and why it's the OG. Um, yeah, it's been really, really nice and I've enjoyed like having it back in my routine and kind of rediscovering it. It's a, it's a great product and if you haven't tried it before, you should definitely give it a shot because it's really nice. It's really good. And now this is a newer member to the family and this is the Laneige Seeker sleeping mask because I know the water sleeping mask also comes in a lavender version. So in my mind, I was kind of like, oh, so it's just like the same, but with Seeker, but it's very much like different. It's like very creamy, very thick. This one has squalane, glycerin, pentanol, shea butter, and a bunch of other, you know, nice little additives in there. It's really creamy. I can definitely see myself using this more in the winter time though. I have been enjoying it, especially when those nights when I'm like really tired and I just kind of like want to do a one and done. This is really nice for that because it does just have a little bit more of that like creamy hydrating substance. Like I think you can rely on this more on its own than the water sleeping mask. That one I feel like you need to have a couple of layers of hydrating goodness because it does a really good job at locking it in. But uh, this one I think has its own like inbuilt hydrating, soothing properties. It's Seeker, so it's designed to help with inflammation and take down redness. Um, and if you're acne prone, this might be a nice product to use, especially in those cold and wintry months. I know a lot of you guys are going into winter now. So this would be really nice if you are wanting something soothing, but isn't necessarily going to be uh, commodogenic. So I think, yeah, it's, it's really nice. I kind of was pleasantly surprised. I was sort of just expecting the same thing, but in green. <laughs> And then we come to the last product of today, but certainly not the least, this is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask Fairy. <laughs> so this is funny because I actually have never tried this before. I know you might be like, how? Because it's such an iconic, like number one best-selling K-beauty product of all time and has been four years at this point. Um, but I've tried the vanilla one. So I purchased the vanilla one from Sephora uh, in one of their sales earlier this year. I love it. I keep it by my bedside table. Um, so stop and I'm like, oh, do you want to try the berry one? And I was like, sure. But I kind of like, I don't know, I sort of thought that it might smell really candy, fruity, sweet, which I don't mind, but I quite like the creamy vanilla of the other one. But this is like, it smells quite like a strawberry chapstick, but more than that, <laughs> and Australians, you will notice, it smells like the pink snake from the natural confectory lollies bag, like the pink lollies. That's what it smells like to me, but also kind of like strawberry chapstick, somewhere between those two. I have been using this most nights. Um, it is very similar. Unlike the water sleeping mask and the Seeker sleeping mask, which are like two different formulations. These ones are essentially a formulation, but it's just different flavors. I know they launch limited edition flavors all the time. I think that's such a lovely thing to gift. If you're looking at gifts for the holidays, I think so many people would really like this because it's just so nice and actually not enough love to this little spatula. It's really, really lovely. It's just like a little silicon, um, tip which just feels so lovely and soothing on the lips. Normally when I get like little plastic spoons I kind of am just like meh trash <laughs> or I like lose them immediately because I just kind of like use my fingertip because I'm only using my skincare on myself right but I actually have been like keeping these applicators around because I just like how they feel. They feel soothing. It's kind of like spa like if I close my eyes and if I use my like arm in an interesting way maybe I feel like someone else is putting on my lip balm. I don't know why I want that but <laughs> There you go. I am super prone to dehydrated lips. My lips are always dry and I am obsessed with lip balms and lip glosses. And it's getting to like a concerning level. I've been looking in my drawers and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> hmm. I only have but one pair of lips. How am I meant to use all of this up? Um, but it is actually like genuinely hydrating. Um, I have tried other like lip balms and things like that before, which just like glorified Vaseline, but I do genuinely think this is a really beautiful Lux formula. And I'd be really, really keen to try out some of their like glowy lip bar sticks because if this is their like tub formula, I'd be really keen to try their like portable version because I just think it's amazing. Very giftable, everyone should try it. It's stunning. And I feel like I can give you my like complete opinion on it because I've been using the vanilla one for months. So I can go ahead and say the berry one's also really, really lovely as well. So I don't know if you guys would be interested in seeing my like 2020 products of the year for skincare and makeup, but uh, high chance that the Laneige sleeping mask would make it onto the list. Actually, like a hundred percent chance. It's it's so good. It's so good. And with that, that wraps up all of the best-selling cream beauty products that I've tried today from Stalvana. These are just my first impressions. I haven't been using them for that long, so take all of this with like a little grain of salt 
little sugar. Or vitamin C powder, whatever your preference is. But it was really nice to try out some of these like best selling products that I've been seeing on my Instagram for such a while uh, and just get stuck into it. And I'm like throwing myself back into the skincare foray and it feels so good. And I have some more skincare content coming out soon. If you guys would like to see any dedicated brand videos on any of these brands, like maybe Laneige or um, Isn Tree or something like that, please do let me know down in the comments below and I can. Uh, I can make that happen, I can uh, open the purse strings and allow myself to indulge under the premise of it being for my YouTube channel, but primarily just being for me and my noggin. <laughs> All the links for the skincare products that I've shared with you down today will be in the description box below and don't forget to use my code INF10LL if you want to get a little bit of money off your order. Probably use my own code because the deals are premium. If you want to chat skincare, please feel free to DM me on Instagram. Uh, we can talk about skincare there, it's a really great way for me to like be able to message you guys and like chat about recommendations and products and brands we like and things like that. Uh, and you can also follow me on TikTok. I don't know what it is looking like for me yet. <laughs> I haven't decided what genre or what niche of TikTok I am, but currently it's Lucy niche, which is just the same as my channel, I guess. It's a little bit of everything, uh, but all stuff that I like. I'm gonna go lie in front of the aircon now, but as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next